Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we have an opportunity to take a look at a pair of very rare French military sniper rifles. This is an FRG1 and an FRG2. Now these are very similar to the FRF1 and 2 series rifles, but of course distinct. So the story behind these is, of course, when the French went to develop the FRF series of sniper rifles, they started with the MOS 36 receiver. And the intention was like, we want a MOS 36, but turned into a, a proper precision uh, sniper's rifle. We want, a, we want a bipod on it, we want a pistol grip on it, we want it super duper accurate, like true sniper rifle accuracy. And they found that the MOS 36 receiver flexed a little too much for that level of accuracy. And so they decided to abandon the idea of using a straight up MOS 36 receiver, and instead designed a receiver that was basically fundamentally the same type but not interchangeable. It was a stronger receiver, it didn't have the thumb cut out for stripper clips, that sort of thing. And that's what became the FRF1 and then the FRF2. Now when those were manufactured, uh, you know, contracts, well not contracts were sent out, but you know, all the branches of the military were contacted, like, okay, hey, we're making some sniper rifles, do you want any? This was the Saint-Étienne arsenal. And the Gendarmerie said, yep, we want some. And uh, the Army definitely wanted a bunch, and the Navy wanted some. And the Air Force said, you know what, really, we're fine. Like, we don't really need that. Okay, the FRF series gets produced. Uh, production then shuts down. They make about 6,000 of these FRF-1 rifles. And the problem was then, later the Air Force came back and said, you know what, actually we, we do want some of those. But by the time they did, production had shut down, the tooling, it wasn't economical to restart production for the rather small number of sniper rifles that the Air Force wanted. And so the Air Force was kind of stuck on their own. And what they did then was actually go back and use standard MOS 36 receivers to make a gun roughly equivalent to the FRF-1. And so um, this, the design process for this started in 1991, and the rifles actually went into production in 1994, so really quite recently um, compared to the FR series, which was manufactured in, starting in 1968. Now, there were three versions that were planned. There was the FRG1, which is this guy, which has a fixed bipod, um, basically patterned after the FRF1. There was then the FRG2, which is this guy, which has the improved bipod and a few other tweaks uh, from the FRF2. And then there was originally going to be an FRG3 chambered for 7mm 08 for commercial sale to the civilian market. Those never actually got produced. So. Um, the G1 and the G2 are the rifles that did get produced, and we're talking only really a couple hundred of each. Now there are a few differences, substantial and significant differences, between these and the FRFs. So let's take a closer look. Let me show you the various couple of differences um, up close. So we can start by looking at the markings here. Um, these rifles were originally MOS 36 receivers, so they would have said MOS model 1936 and a serial number here. And there is this relief panel, you can see where they milled away all of those markings, replaced them with FRG1 and a caliber. Now both the G1 and the G2 were made from the beginning in 7.62 NATO. Of course this is the 1990s, the 7.5 French cartridges is well obsolete um, at this point, and um, 7.62 NATO is the obvious cartridge for them. Um, the serial numbers uh, remain on uh, vertically on the back of the receiver, like they are on the FRF rifles. It can be a little difficult to uh, distinguish between an FRF and an FRG um, in a lot of pictures. The most, one of the easiest distinguishing features is to look for this cutout. This was the thumb uh, relief for stripper clips in the MOS 36. Of course this is a MOS 36 receiver, so that, that relief cut remains in there. Uh, we can also look underneath here, and you can see that this is actually where the original floor plate for the MOS 36 would have sat. And that leads to another problem, which was magazines. So when the FRF1 was designed, they wanted it to have a detachable box magazine, and this was still in 7.5 French. Well, you have a bit of a problem. If you're going to use a MOS 36 receiver, that was designed to have uh, just a floor plate and follower. You didn't need magazine walls, because you had the receiver walls to act in that role. So when they designed the box magazine, they had to make it a little bit bigger than would actually fit in a MOS 36 receiver. So FRF magazines will not fit in the FRG. Instead, 
when the Air Force decided that it wanted its own sniper rifles and had to build them out of MOS 36s, they had to design a new magazine. Now, because these were in 762 NATO, which is a 3mm shorter case, they were able to make the FRG magazine just a hair shorter, which allowed it to fit in the MOS 36 receiver. Um, the feed lips are a little bit different here. Um, not, not a tremendous difference, but you can see that they come all the way back on the FRF and they're cut a little bit shorter on the FRGs. The easiest way to distinguish between these, by the way, this thing is just a rubber pad that sits on. In fact, I think that's an FRF uh, base pad. We can pop that off. The easiest way to distinguish an FRG magazine is that it has one uh, over travel stop, where the FRF magazines have two. So this will fit nicely in there. That's a 10 round magazine, by the way. The stock assembly on the FRG is identical to the FRF, so it's the same pistol grip, same wood stock, there are two interchangeable cheek risers, there's interchangeable inserts for length of pull, the same style of trigger, and these do have a manual safety on them, although it is a very simple one, it just simply blocks the trigger from going backwards, and that's the same as the FRF series. And it was uh, actually the very first French bolt-action rifle to have a manual safety on it. On the G1, we have a wooden handguard out here with a pair of bipod legs. These bipod legs are not adjustable, they don't tilt, they don't pan. Um, you do have adjustable length legs. If I unscrew that, this, this is supposed to be spring-loaded, this one is a little grindy, it needs some oil in it, but um, you can adjust the length of the leg like that. However, where the FRF1 had iron sights on the barrel, the FRG does not. So you have a wood handguard here that's solid all the way across the top. In addition, the FRF had its own proprietary scope mount. The FRGs, they put this rail just across the top of the receiver, and that fits a kind of an old-style Stanag uh, scope mount. The bolt handles, um, again, because this is standard MOS 36, the bolt handles were changed up a bit. Um, and they have the, well, the same sort of bend, they've just been run vertically. Where the MOS 36 originally had a forward bent bolt, the FRGs were given just straight vertical bent bolts. Uh, a little simpler to, to operate. Magazine release is the same as on the FRFs. And we have the same style of flash hider out here. This is a four groove uh, barrel with a four groove or a four slot flash hider. The reason for this two-piece deal here is they found best accuracy when the slots in the flash hider lined up with uh, the rifling in the barrel. So you can adjust the flash hider to line it up precisely with the rifling, there's a specific tool for that, and then you tighten down this basically locking nut um, to get it in proper position. You can also adjust uh, how far in or out the flash hider is set uh, to tune it for best possible accuracy. The main difference with the G2 over the G1 is that it has the same bipod as the FRF2. So instead of being fixed into the handguard, this bipod is mounted on a sleeve that goes over the very back of the barrel, and the, the rifle actually hangs below the bipod, and it's able to uh, move in two axes. So I can rotate the rifle like so, I can also uh, pivot it like so. I don't want to hit my camera tripod, but you've got a decent range of motion in this. Um, you do still have the ability to extend the bipod legs, so push that in and we can uh, retract it. Uh, we have some rubber bipod feet on there now, instead of the original uh, just metal foot. You can see that there is a cutout in the handguard to allow space for the bipod to move, um, but there are still no iron sights on the barrel. And the bipod, now, instead of just being friction locked, actually has a locking button. So I push this in, and then I can fold the bipod legs up. I can do that on each side. And they lock in position like that. The rest of the gun is the same. We still have the same uh, Stanag type um, rail across the top of the receiver. Same pistol grip, same safety. Uh, the same adjustable style of stock. So, so the FRF1 in 7.5 French had uh, four groove barrels, all of them. In 7.62 NATO with the FRF2s they had both three groove and four groove, so they made flash hiders to match with this whole concept of uh, lining up the flash hider with the rifling lands and grooves.
you can note that this is an original Moss barrel, and it is marked with what I think is just a lot number there. Rotate that so you can see it. So there you have the FRG1 and FRG2. Well, needless to say, these are quite rare guns today. Um, in, in military service they have been replaced by the HK417, and the FRF2 is well on its way to being replaced by the 417 as well. Um, so very few of these survive, and um, a big thank you to the private collector who allowed me to show you his FRG1 and G2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.